Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to take a look at audio device control and explain what it means. Now, you may have seen uh, stuff like phantom power and gain and uh, high pass and all that stuff on your channel strips. I think they made it in Logic 10.5 that you don't really see that stuff anymore unless you have it turned on, but in Logic 10.48 you saw it there by default. But as I said, in Logic 10.5, you don't really see it anymore. But I wanna uh, get into uh, what it is and how to use it. So unfortunately, there is a very, very limited amount of audio interfaces that this will work with. At the moment, it's just interfaces from Apogee and now uh, Audient Evo series uh, seems to support this as well. Um, and that's just as of this recording in the mid to late summer of 2020. So. Yeah, those are your options right now. The audience stuff is relatively inexpensive and I got a review of that coming up. So like and subscribe and stay tuned to the channel to see that when it's available. But today I'm going to talk about uh, audio device control and demonstrate it with an Apogee element interface. So I'm going to jump into the mixer here and so I'm going to press command to open a mixer in its own window. Now in untitled one mixer tracks window audio one partially hidden channel strip group. And I'm going to full screen the mixer here. So. Space with Logic Pro 10 containing window untitled one. Mixer. Tracks. Full screen space. Just did command control F to do that. So I'm going to interact with this channel script for audio one. In audio one. Channel strip group. This is just a blank project with just a single audio track in it. I'm going to jump to the top of the channel script with VO home. Once again, if you're on a laptop, that's VO, FN, and the left arrow. Sensitivity button. And you see at the top of the channel strip, we have all these controls like sensitivity. Off. Phantom power. Switch. Phantom power. Off. High pass filter. Switch. Off. Phase invert, switch one, input gain, slip one, input gain knob, hardware monitoring, button, setting, button. And then settings. Now this is usually where your channel strip will start. If you don't have audio device turned on, you'll see just settings. Off, gain read off, EQ mono, channel mode, switch, input one, button, etc. And those settings that I showed you that said phantom power and phase invert and stuff like that, that will work for whatever input you have selected here. So if I set this to no input, you'll see that stuff disappears. Menu, four, check mark, no input. No input. Press no input. Audio one. Channel strip group. Let me re-interact with the channel strip. Now if I jump to the top of this channel strip. Setting button. You see it just starts with settings. Off. Off. Mono. Input button. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to input one. Menu three I input. Sub bus. Sub bus. Sub input. Sub input. Sub input one. Input two. Input one. Input one. Alright. There we go. We got input one selected. Now, if you don't have wooded interfaces that support audio device control and it's still showing up whenever you have an input selected. You can go into the mixer toolbar and I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Out of mixer, layout, out of mixer, group. Untitled one, mix mixer, group. In mix mixer, toolbar. Go into the mixer toolbar. In mixer, edit, options, menu button, view, menu button. So go to the view menu, view space. Menu, 14 items. I'm just going to hit view N to jump to the bottom of this menu. Configure channel strip components ellipsis. And now I'm going to start using view up arrow to go up. Ready channel strip component, channel strip components, sub menu. Channel strip component, that's what you're looking for here. And if we expand the submenu, channel strip components, submenu 21 items check mark, audio device controls. See, audio device control is the first option there. So if you just feel space on that to uncheck it, it will hide it. So when you select an input, the audio device control stuff won't come up. But as I like to use it, I'm going to leave that checked. But that's how you can hide it if you're still seeing it after you select an input and you don't have one of the interfaces that support it. All right. So get out of here. Closing menu. Let's go back to our channel strip. Auto Mixer, group. In mixer, mixer, layout area. Mixer, layout, in mixer, lay audio one, partially hidden, right. channel strip group. So let's interact with this. In audio one. And you hit via ohm. Sensitivity button. All right. So sensitivity. This is where you can choose whether the input is a mic input, a line input, or an instrument input. And there are two options for line plus four or minus 10 dB or an instrument input. So I have a guitar plugged into input one. So I need to set that to instrument. So let's feel space on this. Menu for instrument. And Check mark, mic. you see set to a mic input right now, so closing menu. I'm going to grab my guitar and I'm going to turn on input monitoring with control I. And now if I play my guitar, you realize you're not hearing anything through logic. So I'm going to hit VO space on sensitivity. Menu instrument. Set this to instrument. Closing menu. Sensitivity. And now. Instrument. Checked. Press sensitivity. We got button. it on instrument, but now we just got to see what the gain is set to. Off. Phantom power. Off. High pass off. Phase invert, switch, zero, input gain, slider. Input gain is set to zero. And slider. So let's turn this up a little ten. bit. Now it's on 10. Turn this up a little bit more. 20, 30, 40. And now that might be a little too loud. 
but you see I'm adjusting the input gain on my interface right from here. I set it to be instrument and now I can adjust the input gain, turn 30, this 20. down a little bit. So there we go. All right. And most of this other stuff won't apply because this is an instrument uh, slider. set in right here. Um, input gain knob, circular slider. But now I'm going to put my guitar down and switch over to a microphone. All right. I got a microphone in front of me that's going through logic, except you can't hear it yet because I'm still set to a guitar input. Now this microphone is plugged into input 2, so I'm going to go over and switch input to input 2. Now if you remember, this input is set to 20, so watch what happens when I switch over to input 2. 20. In hardware setting. Off. Off. Mono. Input 1. Button. Met. Check mark. No input. Hyphen. Input. No input. Hyphen. Input. Sub. Input. Check mark. Input 2. Right. Press input 2. Microphone's plugged into input 2. I'm going to jump back to the top Audio here. Audio 1. Partially hidden. Channel strip groove. In audio 1. No. Unfortunately, with Logic, whenever you change the input, you got to re-interact with the channel strips. I just did that. So now I'm going to jump to the top of the channel strip here with VL Home. Sensitivity button. And sensitivity, remember, let's see what the sensitivity is set to. Menu for instrument. Instrument. Check mark. Mic. So it's already a microphone. Closing menu. So sensitivity now, button. Let's. Off. Phantom power. Switch. Off. High pass filter. Switch. Off. Phase invert. Switch. 50. Input gain. Slider. Input gain is set to 50. You can hear me through the microphone. Once I switch over to input two, you're probably able to hear me through the mic. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn this up. In slider, 60, 70. Check, check, check. 60, 50. So you see, you can adjust the input gain here. Now, Auto slider. the cool thing is. Off, phase invert, off, high pass fill, off, phantom power, switch. If this was a microphone that required phantom power, you could turn that on there. Off, high pass filter, switch. I believe the high pass filter is only on the Apogee Ensemble, so the elements don't have a high pass filter built into the preamp, so this won't do anything here. Off, phase invert, switch. And this comes in handy. Let's say you're micing up a drum kit and you want to flip the phase, right? Uh, you know, record it with the phase, flip the tape, you know, flip the phase on, say, the snare bottom mic. Um, you can flip the phase right here as well. So just about the only control that doesn't show up here is a soft limit. That's um, a function on the Apogee mic pre's that basically allow you to, it kind of gives you a little bit of extra headroom if you start to clip, it kind of gives you a little bit of protection. That, and you can also set two inputs to be a stereo pair. You can group them together in the Apogee control app software. Other than that, the nice thing about this is that it tends to remember the settings. So. Uh, if I create a new audio track here, I'm going to press command option A and let's get out of audio one. Out of audio one, Par audio two, partially hidden, channel strip. I'm going to hit control I to turn input monitoring on as well. In audio two, partially. Interact with audio two, I'm going to press VL ohm to audio jump to two. the top. Name. Sensitivity. But and let's set this to, well, it's probably set to input one. So let's menu for check mark instrument. Yep. Set Closing the instrument, menu. So I'm guessing. Off, off, off. 20, 20. Hardware setting. Off, off. Mono. Input one. Button. Yep. So it's input one. Sensitivity. Button. So you see these settings are still the same as we left. Off. Them. Phantom power. Off, off. 20. Input gain. The slider. Gain is set to 20 on this. Let me reach over and drum some strings on my guitar. Yep. So that's the basic gist of audio device control. About the only thing I did not cover 20. Input hardware monitoring button. is hardware monitoring. So if you ever want to do direct monitoring instead of using input monitoring to monitor through logic, you can just hit this hardware monitoring button and that will turn on direct monitoring for you. So there's a lot of functionality built into the channel strip here if you are a Apogee user. Now I will say the Evo only gives you a microphone gain control from the channel script but that does have some cool features of its own so check out the review of the evo as well but this is just a bonus for you just wanted to let you know that uh, audio device control actually works on your built-in inputs if you're in logic and you're using the built-in microphones for whatever reason audio device control will adjust the gain of those in as slider. well so case in point 10. now you can hear me from across the room in logic Zero minus ten and minus twenty. You can turn it down all the way. But just wanted to let you know that that is an option. It goes from minus twelve to plus twelve with the default uh, built-in input. So I do wonder if you're using some kind of generic USB device that doesn't have like a way to turn it to, to gain up in hardware. 
if it will work on that as well. But anyway, just wanted to throw that bonus tip out there. It does work on your built-in microphones as well, as far as audio device controls go in Logic. All right, guys, hope you found that useful. As always, like and subscribe. If you got any questions about audio device control, leave those in the comments below. If you got a suggestion for a future tutorial or any tips or tricks of your own that you'd love to share with the community, also feel free to leave those in the comments below. And as always, until next time, happy recording.